Welcome back. This video is going to be a little bit longer, so have a little patience. In American comics, we call the era between 1938 and 1954 the golden age of comics. And we're usually referring especially to comic books. Why the golden age? Well, it's this massive explosion of creative output and the birth of the form as we know it. And it's where superheroes begin. Now, to tell the story of the comic book and the birth of the superhero, we actually have to jump back to the newspaper for a minute. So last week when we looked at newspaper strips, we were looking mostly at gag strips. And humor or gag strips were the most common kind of strip in the newspapers. But after a while, people decided to start experimenting with genre, and the adventure strip is born. Now, the adventure strip, even though some gag strips included adventure stories, focused on adventure, took it a little bit more seriously. And we actually get the appearance of two adventure strips in the same year. In January of 1927, the first two adventure strips appear in the newspaper for the first time. One of these is Buck Rogers, written and drawn by Dick Culkin. And as you can see here, later republished in Famous Funnies, the same Famous Funnies that makes the first comic book. The other is Tarzan, which was written by Bern Hogarth, adapted, of course, from the Edgar Rice Burroughs novel, and drawn by Hal Foster. Now, some of you might know Hal Foster. He's most well-known for Prince Valiant. These strips actually turn out to be quite popular. People seem to enjoy the broader range of genres and types of strips that they can read in the newspapers. And so more begin to get made. When it comes to our story for the day, a few of the other important ones are Dick Tracy, who's written and drawn by Chester Gould. Now, what's interesting about Chester Gould is that despite having a relatively st straightforward and even serious storyline in Dick Tracy, his style was very, very cartoony and was able to get away with showing some serious violence in a way that was not allowed in other comic strips at the time. Another is Flash Gordon, written by Don Moore and drawn by Alex Raymond. Now, Flash Gordon is largely a ripoff of Buck Rogers, but he had much better artists, as you can see here. These lush illustrations and exciting storylines made people embrace the science fiction genre. Terry and the Pirates was written and drawn by Milt Kniff, and this featured a young boy on adventures, generally around the China Sea, with a dashing older captain. We get this kind of relationship between the dashing hero and his young sidekick for the first time, even though technically Terry is the main character. And finally, The Phantom, written by Lee Falk and drawn by Ray Moore. Interestingly, The Phantom is not hugely popular in the States, but remains very popular in both India and Australia. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about the Phantom is that he's got a costume. Now, he doesn't really have any superpowers, and this is more of a jungle adventure theme, which is actually a very popular genre at the time. But this costume is one of the important precursors to the superhero genre. Which brings us to Action Comics number one. Now, the cover date is June 1938, but technically it was released on April 18th, 1938. Action Comics was a new comic book featuring a variety of action-adventure stories, as you might guess from the title. Now, comic books started, as I've mentioned, as reprints of popular newspaper strips. But eventually, well, reprinting popular newspaper strips gets expensive, and smaller companies would hire young artists to draw new stories or rip-off stories that were original but inspired by many of the same popular strips at the time. So when Action Comics appears, there's a tradition now of not just reprinted comic books, but also comic books featuring original material. Action Comics number one features, of course, Superman. He's the title story and the first story, but several other stories appear and several other characters who reappear over the course of Action Comics run. We now see comic books, well, it's Superman number one, and it features one sort of episode of a Superman story, but in the past, comic books were anthologies. They would frequently feature a lot of different stories with a lot of different characters. And yes, even though in a lot of forms it's hard to pinpoint the first of something, we do know that Superman is the first superhero. Now, superheroes are interesting for several reasons. One, they're a uniquely American creation. 
they certainly draw on mythology, on action adventure stories, on science fiction stories, but that particular combination of supernatural powers and secret identities and bright colored costumes, well, that comes out of American comics at this moment. The other interesting thing about comics is that it's the only genre that was created in comics first. Now, adventure stories, science fiction stories, humor stories, romance stories, these all existed before comics existed, but the superhero story is born in comics. And that makes one wonder what the connection between comics as a form and this particular kind of fantasy might be. Now, Superman is, to put it mildly, a big hit. In September of 1940, the Superman comic book alone, and the Superman comic book is actually a spin-off of Action Comics, well, it had a circulation of 1.25 million a month. The industry created over 15 million in revenue. And these statistics blow my mind. In comic strips and consumer culture, Ian Gordon found that by the mid-1940s, 90% of children ages 6 to 11 not only read comics, but read 15 comic books a month. Between the ages of 12 and 18, well, that fell to 80%, and they only read 12 books a month. Now, this number is crazy. A really hot-selling title, like the first title of a new event, sells 125,000 copies a month. That's 10 times less than Superman was selling every month. Most popular comics, not special event ones, sell between 50 to 70,000. Comics were a big deal. Now, the Golden Age is where a lot of our most famous heroes get born. Captain America, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, even though he looks different, so does The Flash. Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, Batman, and of course, Superman. But these heroes proved so popular that suddenly there was an explosion of publications. Everybody was trying anything that could work to make a new hit superhero comic. And that meant you had some really cool ideas and some slightly stranger ones. I also wanted to point out that there are actually a huge number of female superheroes at this time, not just Wonder Woman. Moon Girl, Miss Fury, Wildfire, Phantom Lady, the Spider Queen. I can think of five or ten more, but a lot of them got forgotten by history. And some, like Miss Fury, were actually even written by women. <laughs> 